This is Bumper to Bumper TV. So is this all it was promised at launch? Will it change the image of Scion in the North American market from a Tunis project brand to something that will turn heads? The FRS is the one vehicle bringing in a different buyer for the division of Toyota, which is focused primarily on 20-somethings as a customer base. But this is a platform that works well both on the track and on the street as a daily driver for those who want something out of the ordinary. Even though it's not usually a popular choice these days, the FRS still offers a manual gearbox. There is a six-speed automatic available, but to be honest, we like the manual better. The rear-wheel drive transaxle gets the most from the two-liter boxer engine developed by Subaru. The D4S model is still rated at 200 horsepower and 151 foot-pounds of torque when it leaves the factory. But that's before modifications like turbo or superchargers are installed. We found the base drivetrain was also better on fuel economy than advertised. In a recent week behind the wheel, it was not uncommon to get 32 mpg combined. Now the specs call this a four passenger vehicle, but the only thing we could fit in the back seat was an equipment case for lights and other production items. Surprisingly, the racing style seats are actually comfortable in street driving situations and the expected lower back strain did not occur. In the test car, we did appreciate the updated audio interface, which accepts streaming audio from smartphones and tablets. We think Scion would be smart to take advantage of the FRS as a hybrid performance car and daily driver. With only five models in this lineup, the brand can use it to attract performance enthusiasts to a nameplate that's trying hard to continue the excitement that has waned as the original customer base has gotten older. This is Greg Morrison. We want to know what you think, so email us. The address is bumper to bumper TV at cs.com.